Today I'm sharing seven simple yet transformative slow living practices that have helped transform my life and helped me break free from hustle culture. I'm Shania, a metaphysical mind trainer and slow life design coach that inspires conscious creators to create and live life on their own terms. Today we're going to talk about what slow living is all about, how it can benefit our lives, and what it can look like if we are not ready, willing, or able to run off grid and buy a cottage on a hillside. You may be thinking, is this just another hippy dippy bandwagon that new agers are jumping on at the moment? Well, by the end of this video, I'm hoping you have enough information to answer that question for yourself. Let's get into it. In Carl Anare's 2004 book, In Praise of Slow, he describes the slow movement as, a cultural revolution against the notion that faster is always better. The slow philosophy is not about doing everything at a snail's pace. It's about seeking to do everything at the right speed, savoring the hours and minutes rather than just counting them, doing everything as well as possible instead of as fast as possible. It's about quality over quantity in everything from work to food to parenting. When I hear the words right speed, I recognize that it could be so subjective and interpreted in very different ways. So the question I ask myself is, if I decide to go faster in this moment, in this activity, what is it that I'm sacrificing and is it necessary? If we don't wanna put ourselves in a space where we feel like we need to rush through our day. We have to train ourselves to manage our activities better. Bob Proctor says that time cannot be managed. Instead, we manage activities. Managing activities begins with planning. It's simple. There is not a trick to it. Each night, write out a list of what to do tomorrow. Wake up and do it. The slow movement is said to have origins as far back as 1986 when the Italian journalist Carl Petrini took part in a campaign against the fast food chain McDonald's opening near the Spanish steps in Rome. So began the slow food movement, which led to other methods and inspirations for slowing down, such as slow art, slow consumption, slow conversation, slow education, etc. And thus simply put, the slow movement. Most of us live in a productivity driven society where how much you produce and how fast you produce it is glorified and sleep when you're dead and rest is for the weak mentality is the epitome of how to achieve success, wealth, fame, and any other worthwhile endeavors. Research has shown that working long hours doesn't seem to result in more output, but it does cause more health problems like stress, depression, sleep issues, heart problems, and more work mistakes are actually made. Then what do we do? I have seven slow living practices that you can incorporate today to help you along your journey. Number one, we'll start by putting Bob Proctor's advice into action and make a plan to manage our activities so we don't feel the need to rush. There are several ways that this can be done. The way that I typically do it is I make a list and I prioritize the list from most important to things that can probably wait if I don't get around to it. I try to make it a priority not to overwhelm this list and only keep it at about three to five things that I am trying to accomplish throughout the day. When I'm thinking about the activities that I wanna put on my list, I take inventory of four different areas of life. Those areas include business, home, family, and self. Of course, these can be different for you, but I try and take those areas and pick one or two activities that need to be done in those areas and put those on my list. Number two, leave space in your schedule to go slowly. And most importantly, try yourself to become comfortable with going slowly. 
If you need to work up to fully embracing going slow throughout your day, then start by choosing a couple of activities that you can commit to going slow. This could be reading a book or taking a walk, washing your dishes or participating in a Qigong practice. Just make sure that you are fully committed to showing up and going slowly and intentionally. Number three, commit to getting in nature and allow it to be your guide. I heard a quote that said, nature never hurries yet everything is accomplished. Number four, segment intending. If you haven't heard of segment intending, Abraham Hicks has lots of information here. But in a nutshell, segment intending is basically just having an intention for every activity that you participate in. So a cue could be walking through a doorway. So for me, when I walk out of or into a doorway, it's my signal to set a new intention for the activity that I'm going to participate in. So for example, if I'm in my computer room and I want to go into my kitchen, I'm walking through two doorways and that's my cue to set a new intention for washing the dishes. Number five, monotasking. So you're focusing on one task at a time. Maybe you can start this practice by deciding ahead of time that when I have to do this particular activity, I'm going to eliminate distractions, turn off the screens, give this activity my full attention for at least 30 minutes, maybe longer if you're feeling super ambitious, but you're going to give one activity your full undivided attention. And if you want to make sure that your thoughts don't take you away from what it is that you're trying to accomplish, have a notebook handy so that when those random thoughts that will usually take you away from what you're doing because you're too afraid that you might forget it if you don't do it now, such as the case for myself, have your notebook near, write down whatever random thoughts come up that you might need to take care of later and continue focusing on your task for the allotted amount of time that you said that you would. Number six, have boundaries around screen time. If it is at all possible at any point throughout your day to make immediate access to you off limits for anyone outside of your household, make that a habit to have activities or times where you are not being pulled by any other people's agendas. Maybe you'll check your phone at a certain time of the day and respond to calls and emails at a certain time of the day. Number seven, learn to say no. Now, I know this can be hard for some of us, but it is essential to our well-being to be able to say no. I know we've all heard like if it's not a hell yes, then it's a hell no. So if it's not in line with what it is that you have decided for yourself in your day or week, life, whatever the case may be, learn to say no when people are trying to siphon your energy into things that aren't in line with what it is that you want for yourself. I know that we can fall into FOMO if we say no too often. And I don't want this to be a situation where you're not hanging out with friends. Have the discipline and boundaries set to be able to say no when necessary, especially when you have things that you are trying to accomplish. A lot of the times when we have these time restraints, it's really self-inflicted. When it's not a true time-sensitive matter, where can we take a breath and be present. And a bonus that I wanted to leave you with is to start recognizing your behavior when you feel you have to rush or you don't have enough time. And every time you catch yourself in that mode, choose to take a moment to reset and take the pressure off. If you're running late, it is what it is. Allow yourself to continue to move forward toward where you need to go or what you need to do. But if we've mismanaged our activities and now we're in a state where we're going to be late, then it's okay. Relax, allow yourself to learn from the situation, see what you could have done better, 
so that you won't be in the situation the next time. Number one, plan. Number two, leave space in your schedule to go slowly. Number three, commit to getting into nature. Number four, segment intent. Number five, monotask. Number six, have boundaries for screen time. Number seven, learn to say no. Our bonus, start recognizing how you feel and your behavior when you, you have to rush or you don't have enough time. This is your place for inspiration and resources on how to live life on your own terms through mind training, life hacking, and conscious creating. If this video was helpful for you, I think you'll also enjoy this one. See you there.